All right. Oh, somebody write the title of the lesson for me. I forgot to do that. Again, family. All right, for those who don't know, I'm Brother Al. This is my reader, Brother Will. We're coming to you on behalf of the Vineyard of Israel in the name of the Most High God. Uh, we'd like to thank him and give him uh, all the praise, the glory, and the honor for bringing us from great deception. All right, we'd like to thank him for giving us a chance to worship on this true day, this Sabbath day. All right, so we got a message today entitled, uh, As It Is Written. The scriptures cannot be broken. Once again, the title of the lesson today is, As It Is Written, The Scriptures Cannot Be Broken. So the goal, you know, of the lesson, and this is going to turn out to be a series, I got more scriptures that we can bear today, so we'll just let it uh, run on and on until we cover the whole life of Jesus. Because that's what is uh, pertaining to the life of Jesus. Right? We call this man our Savior. We accept him. You know, so we need to know who we put our life on the line for, right? We need to know if, if how do we believe on Jesus, because the Lord gave us a way to believe on him, right? And it's very specific, because we got a lot of people that say they serve God, but yet and still, they don't do what he say. They believe on him after the traditions of men, and you got to realize we can't believe on Jesus by word of mouth. The Lord told us to prove all things. So that's what we're going to do. He even told us to prove him. He said, because his word is tried, right? He don't have a problem with us proving him out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to run down the life of Jesus. We're going to start with the birth. And that's probably as far as we're going to get today. It reminds me of uh, when we used to go to them Sunday uh, churches and they had a series for about six months. Right? <laughs> they had the same, look like the same message every week, you know, but it, it was. The series goes on. We're, going, we're looking into his life. We're going to go from the birth to the dead, to the resurrection. All right? That's the goal. However many weeks it takes, that's what we're going to do. So we read a lot of scripture and we bypass a lot of scripture thinking it has little significance. But in our actuality, it has a lot to do with a lot. Because right? the whole book is written about Jesus. And that's how we got to believe on him as the scripture says. You don't see it. You can't just... Believe how we've been believing in the past. Things we can't even read out the Bible, we believe in. Can't read Christmas in the Bible, but you believe his birthday was December 25th. We can't afford that. My, I can't afford that. My soul on the line, hell is hot. I'm not trying to go there. I need an air conditioning in the wintertime. I'm not built for that place. Right? So I'm going to do all I can to avoid that. Right? So let's start off at uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Second Timothy 3.16. We're going to find out about this scripture and how do we... Uh, who gave it and how we deal with it? And can we make up our own meaning? All right, let's find out. Now, this the Bible, like the Lord tells us, prove. Verse 16, hearken to the scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. How many scripture? All scripture. Who gave it? God. That's right. Ain't no man made scripture. Ain't no white man wrote the Bible. The best thing they can do is print it up for us because they own all the printing press. As far as it goes. Right, all scripture, sorry, Brian, it wasn't was intentional, but, you know, I, like you said, all scripture, absolutely all scripture is given by who? The inspiration of God. For what? And it's profitable for doctrine. Uh-huh. For reproof. This is what it's good for, for doctrine, for reproof, 
for correction, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. This is what the scripture for man don't know how to be righteous. You got to go to the scripture to learn how to be righteous. Well, how are you going to learn if you don't know? God has to teach you. That's what the scripture for. He gave it to you for that purpose. Hearken to the scripture. That the man of God may be perfect. Right. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right. That the man of God may be perfect or blameless. Thoroughly furnished to what all good works. So the Lord is looking out for the one that's going to believe on him. And he gives you scripture and instruction in order to lead you and guide you in the way of righteousness. Right? Picking up at 2 Peter 1, verse 20. 2 Peter 1 and 20. Because we need to be learning while we read scripture. What's the purpose? What is given? But what's the point? Who is talking about? It's important, but you got this whole big Bible. I'm at page 1653 right now. So it has to be important to give us all this book, right? Second Peter 1, verse 20. Hearken to the Scripture. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Okay, so Peter is telling him, he said, you need to know this first. He said, ain't no prophecy of the Scripture. Is, is of any private interpretation, meaning that the scriptures only have one correct interpretation. They only have one correct meaning. No matter how people use me, what you say, the Lord already told us. Ain't no scripture given for pro no private interpretation. They got one meaning and one alone. Go ahead and read. 21. Mm -hmm. For the prophecy came not in old time by right. the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Right, that's how we got the word. By the holy men of God of old time, they spake according as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, or they, as they were inspired of God. How he told us in uh, 2 Timothy 3. That's how we get the scripture. We get it from the Lord. Make no mistake about it. The Lord tells you in Psalm, he said, forever, O oh God, thy word is settled forever in heaven. So we can have faith in his word, right? Pick me up at John 6, verse 45. John 6 and 45. See, man, you know, man have faith in everything except the word. The only thing that can be proven, they don't have faith in that. But you believe hearsay and books and magazines, even believe fiction, fiction books. To the point where you tell lies to your kids over and over. A big fat man jumped down the chimney and you stay in the apartment. Hmm? You giving him glory. He bringing gifts on Christmas. To everybody in the whole world. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cartoons ain't even that ignorant. Huh? That's the type of stuff man have faith in. Everything except the word of God. That's it. But we ain't we ain't operating after that. Learn not the way of the heathen. Don't operate in the ways of the world. We have to learn of God. That's why he gave us his book. That's what we got to find. Pick it up at verse 45, brother. Will. Go ahead. It is written in the prophets. What is? And they shall be all taught of God. That's every man that's going to receive salvation. Ain't nobody getting in the kingdom and you ain't been taught who God is. It's, why? How do I know? Because it's already been written in the prophets. They wrote about it. Every man that's going to be saved has to be taught who God is. Go ahead and read. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and and have learned of the Father, come and learn to me. That's right. You can't even come to the Lord like you thought you could. He had to draw. He said, every man that have learned, right? And have, at first he said, every man that heard. Then he said, every man that have learned of the Father, he come to Jesus. Go ahead. Not that any man have seen the Father. Right. That's why he had to leave a record of who he is. That's what this Bible is. That's the record. Because ain't no man ever seen him. Go ahead. Save he which is of God. The only one that's seen him is the one that's of God, meaning the Son. The only one that's been to heaven that came down and died and rose again. That's the only one that's seen the Father. If it wasn't for the Bible, we wouldn't even know that there was a Father. That's why we have to be told who he is. Go ahead. He has seen the Father. That's right. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you. What you say? He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That's the gift we want. All I got to do is believe on Jesus and I get everlasting life. That's what they teach you, right? That's a certain kind of way you got to believe. You can't just believe any kind of way. Because a lot of people going to come in the name of Jesus. 
And a lot of people gonna carry a lot of different doctrines in that same name. So how do you know it's the right one? Let's see. Pick up in John the seventh chapter, verse thirty-eight. John seven and thirty-eight. See, the truth is out here. The world rejects the truth. There's a lot of lies to make it seem like the truth ain't out here, but it is. If you want it, you can get it. You have to learn of God. Can't just come as you are. He requires something out of you. Obedience. You have to learn. Verse 38, hearken to the scripture. He that believeth on me, uh -huh. as the scripture has said, what? out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's right, meaning you're going to get eternal life. Because Jesus said everyone that's gonna, that believe on him shall inherit eternal life. And now he told you, he that believe on me as the scriptures say. That's how you have to believe on Jesus. Whatever the scriptures say about Jesus, that's how you have to believe on him. That's how you know he's the true Christ. So if December 25th was the truth, the prophets would have wrote about it. Because the Lord tell you in Amos, I haven't did anything except I revealed my secrets to my servants, the prophets. They wrote about everything. He also tell you, call the end from the beginning. And you got people running around talking about the Old Testament is fulfilled. When they tell you about the second coming of Jesus in the Old Testament. The Old Testament tell you all about Jesus. The New Testament is the way that we can verify who he is. That's the testimony of his life. So we have to believe on Jesus, how the scriptures bear him out. If the scriptures don't say it about Jesus, it ain't true. It didn't happen. Because you got a lot of people that's going to come and dig up archaeological evidence, and they're going to tell lies. But we got to stick to the scriptures. As the Lord told me, heaven and earth are past, but my words have never failed. But the scriptures above everything. All right? So pick me up at uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. The scriptures your guideline. That's why so many pages in this thing. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. And the Lord has given us fair enough warning. Tell us about deception, deception on a million pages. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Hearken to the book. But I fear. What you fear? Lest by any means, uh -huh. as a serpent beguiled Eve in right. his subtility, uh -huh. so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That's right. The Lord done made it simple for us. But he said, I fear that. Like the serpent beguiled Eve, he's going to beguile you also. From what? The simplicity that's in Christ. Go ahead. For if he that cometh preaching another Jesus. And you will have people coming preaching another Jesus. December 25th is another Jesus. Go to church on the first day of the week. That's another Jesus. Jesus died on Good Friday and rose on Easter Sunday morning. That is another Jesus. As soon as you die, you go into heaven. That's another Jesus. All of these are against Scripture. But people teaching it. And they teaching it to you like it's salvation in it. But it don't come from the Scriptures. Throw it away. It's garbage. Go ahead. Whom we have not preached, uh -huh. or if you receive another spirit. Right, see, this ain't no marvel. This ain't no reason to marvel, because people are going to come and you preaching another Jesus. They did it even to the, the, in the days of the apostles. That's why he warned the people. He said they're going to come preaching to Jesus whom we haven't preached. I Meaning you need, it's going to be another one circulating, but the way you find the right one is through the, through the book. Go ahead. Which ye have not received, yes, or another gospel, uh -huh. which ye have not accepted, right? You might well bear with him. That's right. Deal with that person, because people' lives is on the line, and you believe, believe a lot, your life is on the line too. But he let you know that it's gonna happen, right? Drop down to verse uh, thirteen. Go ahead. We're gonna find out who do this type of work. Go ahead. For such are false apostles, mm -hmm. deceitful workers. See, they deceive you. Deceitful workers. People who bring you another Jesus that you can't read about out of the Bible. Those are false apostles. Go ahead. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. What they're going to look like, the apostles of Christ. That's why they use the name. Only way you'll be able to tell is got to be according to the book. Go ahead. And no marvel. Right, don't even marvel. Go ahead. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Right. 
Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. You ain't know Satan had ministers, did you? Just because they don't come to you in the name of Satan, that's why the Lord has warned you about itself. You will never see a reverend hardly, or not a reverend, but a pastor or a leader of the church say, yeah, I'm pastor such and such and such, and I work for Satan the devil, except for that one man that did it that one time on 700 Club. And he slipped up, right? Because he passed the set. But they don't come to you in the name of Satan bringing the set. They come to you in the name of Jesus bringing the set. Go ahead. He said, don't even marvel. Satan got ministers too. Go ahead. In the 15. Yes, sir. Whose end shall be according to their works. Right. They're going to receive the reward based on what they do, right? They ain't getting away. They just getting by. Matthew 24, verse 24. The Lord need them because the people are too disobedient. People love them lies, so the Lord used them also, just like he used Satan. You want to believe a lie? The Lord will give you over to them. He's sending his truth by you. You constantly reject it. He got something for you. Don't worry. He know how to deal with each and every last one of us. Matthew 24, verse 24. We're just going to read that one verse, talking to the Scripture. For there shall arise false Christ. Uh, so he let you know. This is, this is straight out the horse's mouth. Jesus himself, he said, it's going to rise what? False Christ. False Christ. So not only are you going to have false apostles, you're going to have people claiming to be the Christ. They're going to be false, though. He said, it, they're gonna rise, it's going to rise false Christ. Go ahead. And false prophet. Yes. And shall show great signs and wonders. So they're they going to be able to do some work. Don't be deceived by a miracle. A man do a miracle, but yet he goes to the... Uh, Church on the first day of the week, that man is not of God. Ain't no hard to, to tell. You disobedient to the word, ain't no way you of God. I don't care what name you come in. I don't care how many times you say Jesus. You ain't fooling me. You disobey the book. Ain't no way you of the Lord. The Lord told you, my mother and my brother and those who hear the word and do it. Everybody else is a worker of the nickel. What verse? In the 24. Go ahead. So this one false Christ is going to arrive. Don't be surprised. Go ahead. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Right. So they, the miracles and signs and wonders that they produce are going to be so great that if it was possible, they would deceive the very elect. Who are the very elect? The people that have knowledge of God according to the book. The people that have foreknowledge of his coming. Those are the very elect. You have knowledge and you obey the Bible. And the signs and wonders of these false Christs are going to be so great that if it's possible, they'll deceive you too. So do what I say. The false one's got to come first. If you ever get mixed up, the false one's got to come before the real one. That's an easy way if you don't be deceived. Uh, that's 24. That's the end. Sure. Huh? Yeah. That's good. He Hebrews 10 and 7. Hebrews 10 verse 7. So the Lord has given us plenty of warning about the word, how important it is. We're just going to read one verse, verse 7. So, so far we've learned about the word that all the scripture is given by God. All right? Number two, we learned there ain't no private interpretation of none of the scriptures. Number three, we learned you must be taught of God in order to get salvation. Number four, we learn you got to believe on Jesus how? According to the scriptures. Number five, we learn there's going to be a lot of false prophets and a lot of false Christ coming in his name, either uh, working miracles and wonders. All of this to try to deceive the elect. This is another one. Verse 7, hearken to the scriptures. Then said I, what you say? Lo, uh -huh. I come in the volume of the book. Right, right on. It is written of me. To do what? To do thy will, O oh God. That's right. That's the Lord talking to himself. That Jesus saying, Lo. He said, I come in the volume of the book. What that mean? He said, it meaning the book is written of who? Of me. The book, the whole Bible is written about Jesus. This is the only way that we know him. Through the Bible, the pages of the Bible. So he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book and it's written of me. And it's, it's written about me doing the will of the Father. What do you mean? To do thy will, O God. That's what it's written about him. Right? 
So we, we ain't gonna have no excuse. Isaiah 80, verse 16. Because he's telling us where to go and where to get the information. Isaiah 8, verse 16. So now we know that the whole book is written about Jesus. Verse 16, 8, Isaiah 8, verse 16. Talking to the scripture. Bind up the testimony. Uh -huh. Bind up the testimony, like you putting a book together, right? The testimony, that's the New Testament. It's going to testify of the life of, of Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among who? My disciples, my followers. Those are the ones that gonna, the law is going to be sealed among. Everybody else, they're going to run around talking about the law is nailed to the cross. Jesus did it all. You don't have to keep that old law. It's bondage, right? Those are not Christ's disciples. Those fall under the category of those false prophets, deceitful workers. Come on. And I will wait upon the Lord. That's right. Go ahead and read. That hideth his face from the house of Jacob. Go ahead. And I will look for him. Come on. Behold, huh? I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel right. from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. So he said, I, Isaiah speaking of himself, for the Lord, if you want to go that deep with it, he said, I am the children that, that are given to me for signs and wonders in Israel. And they given to us by who? The Lord of hosts. Which one is that? The one that dwells in Mount Zion. So the Lord is for a sign. He give us a sign. That's why I tell you the Jews, they seek out the sign. That's what we look for. Come on. 19. Now drop, drop down to 20. We'll get that 20 verse and we'll escape. Go ahead. To the law and to the testimony. So you got to have both books. You can't get that book with just the Psalms and the New Testament. Or you can't come to me with just the Torah. Or you can't come with the Tanakh and the Torah only. He said the law and the testimony. That's the New and the Old Testament. Come on. If they speak not according to this word, what happened? It is because there is no light in them. The apostles of Christ, there is no light in them. Right, you got to have both words. So you, you got a great way to weave out false prophets and false Christ. Put all of these instructions together. You can weave them out with the quickness. It don't even take all day. As soon as they say something wrong, boom, there you go. You out of here. I already know you folks. You can get everything else right. You gave yourself away. I had a sign. Right? You finish that, verse 20? Yes. Okay, go to the seventh chapter of Isaiah. Let's see what type of sign you're talking about. Pick me up at uh, verse 10. Isaiah 7, verse 10. It's too much work for the average Christian. The Lord tell you, you know, the word of God is going to be to them that don't have knowledge. Line on line, line on line, precept on precept, precept on precept, here a little and there a little. You got to go and get it. You got to get it pertaining to the same subject matter, too. That's what precept is upon precept, or comparison upon comparison. It's comparing the same subject matter. Where do you get it from? You get it here a little and you get it there a little. We got great instructions on how to read the word and understand it. There's no reason to be ignorant in these last days, especially. Right, verse uh, 10, harken to the scripture. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, mm -hmm. saying, Ask the son of the Lord thy God. That's right. Ask it, either in the depth uh -huh. or in the height above. That's right, he said, Ask it, anywhere in the earth. Ask of a sign from the Lord thy God. It don't matter where you ask it, I'll perform it. Go ahead. But Ahaz said, Go ahead. I will not ask. That's right. Neither will I tempt the Lord. He knew better. Right? Go ahead and read. And he said, What did he say? Hear me now, Who? O house of David. What is it? It is a small thing for you to weary men. Mm -hmm. But will you weary my God also? Right. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Who, who going to give this sign right here? The Lord. Right? That's who it is, right? The Lord himself is going to give you a sign. What kind? Behold, what? a virgin shall conceive. And do what? And bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. I mean, he told us a lot. That one little verse said, a virgin going to have a... That, that's a sign. Uh, so you mean to tell me, a virgin is going to conceive and bear a son? 
Not only that, I want you to call his name Emmanuel. And we have people that teach against this. Israelites. But the Lord made a profound statement at the end of, of the testimony of this. We're going to read it. Because with men, ain't nothing like this going to happen among men. Ain't no way no bread you're going to conceive. But if the Lord do it, any, he can do whatever. That's why I said the Lord himself is going to give you a sign. But this is going to be the sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Go ahead. Verse 15. Yes. Butter and honey shall he eat. Right. That he may never refuse the evil and choose the good. So how much butter and honey you going to eat that's going to give you knowledge? Huh? How you going to know to refuse evil by eating butter and honey? You not. This ain't no physical butter and honey, then. This is the word. Butter and honey is the word of God. That's what he consumed. Go ahead. That's how he gonna know to refuse evil by the word that he consumed. Not that actual butter. So I don't want you to go home trying to eat butter and honey and think you're gonna have some knowledge, because it just ain't gonna happen. I don't care how much you, you eat till your stomach hurts. You don't be no smarter. Go ahead. 16. Yes, sir. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil uh -huh. and choose the good, right? the land that abhors shall be forsaken of both her kings. Okay, so this is, a, is a, another little deal that we skip past. Something. I said before the child shall know to refuse good and to choose evil. So before that even happened, he said the land which you abhor, this is the holy land. This is Jerusalem and Samaria. Before that happened, the land is going to be forsaken of both their kings. And we had a law that we can't put no stranger above us once we choose king. So if you know anything about history, you know Israel went into uh, captivity in about 586 BC. When Jesus came on the scene, they was already long gone. They ain't had no king no more. Even when he came to his own, Judah and Jerusalem, who was king over them? Herod. They didn't have it. The king amongst the brethren no more. That's what it means. Before he comes, the land's gonna be forsaken of both their kings. That ain't no king for us. Herod ain't no king for, for the Jews. He is an Idunian, a convert. He ain't no real king. We don't even consider him as when we when we got the kings in the book of the kings and and, and the we ain't finna write no Herod. Huh? gotta be crazy. So the Lord is just pointing, giving you a, 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 a more sure sign like when the Christ is going to come. Let's see what this, let's see if this sign really happened. Pick me up in uh, Matthew first chapter, verse 18. That's the law. Let's go to the testimony. Matthew 1 and 18. We need to read about this. So we said we're going to call it a virgin shall conceive and we're going to call his name Emmanuel that's a great sign. That is a wonder. Matthew 1, verse 18. Let's see if this sign came true. Hearken to the scripture. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Right. So the birth of Jesus Christ happened like this. Go ahead. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, uh -huh. before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Right. So he said his mother Mary before it was espoused or engaged to Joseph. That's the father, right? Before they even came together or knew each other intimately, she already was pregnant. Right? Come on. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Right, so is this the simplicity of Christ? He's running this thing down pretty sim simply, right? And you still gonna have people that go against this and teach, oh, that word virgin just mean she was of a marital age, a young maid, and no stupid, it mean exactly what it say, and you can tell by the testimony of the people, how they react. Why this man trying, he just, he a just man, meaning he obeyed the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Why is he gonna put his wife, or his uh, engaged wife, uh, his wife to be, why is he gonna put her away if uh, he got her pregnant? Like, that's real smart, ain't 
I got you praying. I mean, I know what you're doing now, but it ain't supposed to be, right? So I got you praying, and I'm, I'm done with you. I'm going to do away with you. So why is he going to be considered a just man? That's unjust. But he's thinking about it. He's like, I know I ain't slept with you. Ain't no way in the world you should be pregnant. Come on. Verse 20. Go ahead. But while he thought on these things, yeah. behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, right. saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Okay, now he got a little comfort, right? Because he was thinking, I wonder, probably, who you two did slept with? So the Lord done sent him a message. He said, uh, don't worry about it, Joseph. You know, your wife Mary, the baby that's uh, in her is conceived of the Holy Ghost. So don't, don't fear to take her as your wife. She hasn't slept with a, a man. All right, go ahead. And she shall bring forth a son. And what happened? And thou shalt call his name Jesus. All right. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's, that's going to be his job. His job reflects his name. His name means savior or deliverer. And he already got a job before he's born. To save his people from what? Their sins. That's what the will of God was for his life. For the whole Bible is testifying of him doing it. Go ahead. 22. Yes. Now all this was done. For what reason? That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. So all this was done just so that the will of the Lord can be fulfilled. It already was written. It had to be fulfilled. That which was spoken by the prophet. What was spoken by the prophet? Saying, uh -huh. Behold, yes. a virgin shall be with child. And what else? And shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. What that mean? Which being interpreted is God with us. That's exactly what the prophet said, right? That's why we believe on That's why we believe Mary was a virgin when Jesus was born. Because the prophets already told us about it. And I skipped one. But Jesus was telling them, uh, the scribes and Pharisees, they were trying to condemn him. And he was saying, did I not say in your law that you are God? And he said, if I call you God, the word of God came to you, and the scriptures cannot be broken. That's the key. The scriptures can't be broken. That's why we believe. We believe on Jesus according to the scriptures. The prophet Isaiah already told us about this. As a matter of fact, he told us it was going to be a sign. Right? He said that God himself was going to give us. He even gave us the name Emmanuel, which, and now he told us what it means which is interpreted God with us. So that's why we believe on Jesus, that he was born of a virgin, because God gave us that sign. He told us it was going to happen before it happened, and it was written down. And the scriptures can't be broken. So if somebody comes to you and they tell you, Joseph slept with Mary, that's how they could see Jesus, that's a false prophet. I don't care if you're a Hebrew, Gentile, Hamite, Eat them, I don't, it don't make no difference. No matter how pious he sounds, no matter how elegant he sounds, no matter how good he words, it's still false doctrine. The prophets already told us that God was going to give us a sign. And the sign was going to be, a virgin shall conceive, and you're going to call his name Emmanuel. Come on. 24. Go ahead. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, yes. did as the angel of the Lord had bid him, right. and took unto him his wife. And what happened? And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. That's right. Man, he didn't sleep with her until after his firstborn son was conceived. And he called his name Jesus. That got that simplicity. You don't have to try to guess. Just because we don't understand it, it's not for you to understand. It's a sign that you may believe. Sign is given to unbelievers. It's a sign given to you that you may believe on Jesus according to the scriptures. I wrote it down, then I made it come to pass, right? Pick me up here, Luke 1. We're going to look at it again. Verse 26. Let's get another witness. Luke 1 and 26. So the Lord, the Bible, the scriptures is the way to deal with not down our lives. We're going to have plenty of them. Luke 1, verse 26. Okay. Talking to the scripture. 
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Look, look how precise this thing is. It even told you what month is happening. The sixth month, they said of the Hebrew year. In the sixth month, this, the angel Gabriel was sent into a city of Galilee called uh, Nazareth. Go ahead. To a virgin espoused to a man. So he wasn't just sent to any old body. This angel was sent to a virgin, engaged to a man named Joseph. Both of them of the house of David. Go ahead. Whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Uh huh. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Yes. The Lord is with thee. Amen. Blessed art thou among women. That's because the Lord is with you. How you gonna not be blessed if the Lord is with you, right? Go ahead. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, That's right. and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. So she pondering, how is this going to happen? Go ahead and read. And the angel said unto her, what is it? Fear not, Mary, uh -huh. for thou hast found favor with God. That's right. You have found favor with God. Go ahead. And behold, what? thou shalt conceive in thy womb, mm -hmm. and bring forth a son, yes. and shall call his name Jesus. That's right. That's what the other scriptures say, right? In Matthew. You're going to conceive in your womb and you're going to bring forth the son. Once you do that, I want you to call his name Jesus. Go ahead. He shall be great. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. He shall be called the son of Joseph. The son of the highest. Ain't he telling who the father is right here? The angel know. He getting his instruction from God. He know who his dad is. He said, he shall be called the son of the highest. Go ahead. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. That's right. That's what he's going to get. That's what he's going to see. That's his reward. The throne of his father David. Go ahead. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Uh-huh. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. That's right. He's going to reign over the house of Jacob forever. On the throne of David. There ain't going to be no end to that kingdom. Go ahead. Then said Mary unto the angel. Now watch what she said. How shall this be? How is all this going to happen? How am I conceiving? Go ahead. Seeing I know not a man. Seeing I done slept with Joseph. Seeing I know not a man. Her own testimony. The words that she know who she slept with. She knows she's not about to lie to the angel. Huh? She know that. He said, how is all this going to happen? Seeing that I know not a man. This is how it's going to happen. Drop down to verse 37. Hold on to the scripture. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's right. That's how it's going to happen. With man, it's impossible. You can't even fathom that in your mind a virgin can see him. But with God, small thing to a giant. This light work. I do this without trying. Huh? That's how God is. He got all power. If you got all power, you can do all things. Right or wrong. You do what you want to do. Only one thing he can't do, that's lie. That's it. So that's why we believe. We even got testimony from Mary herself saying, How is all this going to happen? Seeing I know not a man. But he said, You know, God is going to give, uh, uh, he's going to sit on the throne of his father David. Let's see if that was written. Back up me up into um, Isaiah, the main chapter. So we got a name. We know his earthly parents, and we know he's going to be called the son of the highest. We know he was born of a virgin. You know, it was already prophesied about him. And you know what it said about prophecy. Ain't no private interpretation of the prophecy. Isaiah 9, pick me up at verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Talking to the scripture. For unto us a child is born. That's right. Unto us a son is given. That's that child and that son that we were just reading about. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's right, it's the rulership. It's going to be upon his shoulder. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Yes. Counselor. Uh -huh. The Mighty God. What else? The Everlasting Father. And? The Prince of Peace. And what about him? Of the increase of his government. In peace, there shall be no end. Okay, so where is he going to reside? Go ahead. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That means it's going to happen. The zeal with enthusiasm is going to happen. We just read about this child, right? 
said he's going to get the throne of his father David and it's going to be an everlasting kingdom. The prophet already told us it's going to happen. Has it happened yet? No. Is it going to happen? Of course. The Lord going to do this with zeal. Huh? It's going to happen. And he said it's going to the government is going to be upon his child and he's going to sit upon the throne of his father David and he's going to establish it and said it. it's going to be from henceforth even forever and ever and it's going to be an everlasting kingdom now we know where it's going to be on the throne of his father David just like the prophet called it right pick me up at Matthew 2 verse 1 we're going to be in and out of Matthew We'll run down this second chapter. That's probably far as we're going to get to those. But we ain't in over here. I'm not in over here. We need to know the man that we call our Savior. You call it somebody your Savior, you don't know that's dangerous. Matthew 2, picking up at the first verse, Matthew 2 and 1, talking to the script. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, mm -hmm. in the days of Herod the king, right. behold, what? there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. All right, so now we know where he was born at, right? In Bethlehem of Judea. Go ahead. Same. Mm -hmm. So the three wise men came, what they say? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? So did the Bible say it was three wise men? No. They only teach you that on December 25th, right? When they're pushing all the rest of them lies. They might well keep their lives together. And then say three wise men. We don't know how many it was, right? But we do know it was wise men. And they came up well, from the east to Jerusalem. What they say? For we have seen his star in the east. All right, so they say, where is he that is born king of the Jews? His kingdom going to be well on the throne of his father David, right? So it's, they want to know. He said, because we done seen his star in the east. And we come to worship him. What type of star do you see in the east? Nobody know? You'll find out. Go ahead. And I come to worship him. Mm -hmm. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. Right, because he came in Judea at that time. So he was troubled and now it's rude because once he gets troubled, he started killing. Willing and killing. So of course, the whole city is going to be shaken. Because he's a madman. We don't know what he's going to do. He treated him, received his news, and he troubled about it. Somebody else being born king of, of the Jews. I already not killed whoever that even looked like they wanted to threaten the throne. So killing Jesus would be nothing, no big deal for him. So he troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Come on. Verse 4. Go ahead. And when he, and when he had gathered all the chief priests right. and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Right. So he gathered all the chief priests, and, and then he demanded. You need to tell me where Christ is going to be born. What verse? 5. Go ahead. And they said unto him. What they say? In Bethlehem of Judea. Uh-huh. For thus it is written by the prophet. That's how they knew where he was going to be born. Why did they know? Because thus it is written by the prophets. Right? Let's go into uh, let's go into John 7 chapter pick me up at verse 41. So the scriptures have to verify where he was going to be born. John 7 verse 41. John 7 and 41. So he born in Bethlehem of Judea. 7 and 41. Go ahead. Others said, what happened? This is the Christ. Mm -hmm. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Right, yeah, you're about to see how important the scripture is. Because Christ was performing all kind of miracles and doing, and people were still kind of up in the air. They weren't for sure, but they didn't believe the works that he was doing. He told them to believe the words, they, they uh, bear me out. And he said, you know, some people wanted to believe, he said, but some people said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Right? Go ahead. 42. Mm -hmm. Have not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David 
And out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. That's right. And we did so what happened? So there was a division among the people because of him. That's right. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. That's right. So you've got to go according to the scripture. You see, it's a discrepancy even back then. It's a division amongst the people. Why? Because they know what the scripture said, where he should be born. Let's look at it. Pick me up at uh, Micah, the fifth chapter. Micah, the fifth chapter. Sorry, we'll start at verse 1. Micah 5. But, um, go ahead, verse 1. Hearken to the scripture. Now gather thyself in troops, mm -hmm. O daughter of troops. Mm -hmm. He hath laid siege against us. Right. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. That's right. That's the judge of Israel or the king of Israel. They're going to smite him on the cheek. Who did they smite? Jesus. So now we know what he's talking about, right? Go ahead. But thou, who? Bethlehem, uh -huh. Ephratah. Right. Thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, uh -huh. yet out of thee shall... So he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Right, who, who going forth has been from old and everlasting? Man? Oh, Jesus, right? So this is how we know. He said, Bethlehem, we forgot, though thou be small among the thousands of Jews, he said, yet out of you is going to spring forth he that is to be ruler in Israel. Who going to be ruler? The Christ, Jesus. Where he gonna rule that on the throne of his father David? Remember, the scripture told he's gonna rule over the house of Jacob forever. Where is he gonna come from? Where is he gonna be born? Bethlehem. How do we know that? The script, the prophets wrote about it. Scriptures can't be broken. It's already been foretold. We don't have to be confused. The people didn't have to be confused. If they knew he was born in Bethlehem, they should be all right. So you know where he's born. You know he's born in Bethlehem. He's born of a virgin. You should be okay. The scripture is proven him now. All right? Where, uh, where are you at? Verse 3. That's good with that. Go back in the uh go back in the Matthew. Matthew says chapter. So they know where he was born. Pick him up at verse 2 again. Chapter 7. No, uh chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. Saying, mm -hmm. where is he that is born king of the Jews? Yeah, we know. So we know we're here. How do we know? Go ahead. For we have seen his star in the east. Yes. And are come to worship him. That's how they knew what they saw a star. Where they see the star in the east. All right. Let's look at what kind of star rises in the east. All right. We're going to look. Go all the way back to the beginning. Pick me up at Genesis 1 and 14. In verse 7 said, uh, the wise men, he had, Herod inquired of the wise men, he wants to know diligently of them, he wants to know what time the star is going to appear. This star is coming, rising out of the east, right? Pick up at verse 14. Genesis 1 and 14, harken to the scripture. And God said, what did he say? Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven right. to divide the day from the night. Right. And let them be for signs uh -huh. and for seasons yes. and for days and, for what else? and years. Uh -huh. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And what they going to do? And it was so. And God made two great lights. What kind of lights? The great, two great lights. Okay. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Yes. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to do what? To give light upon the earth. Mm. And to rule over the day 
end over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. All right, so the star we're looking for out of the east is what? The sun. Rise in the east, go down in the west. The sun is the light that divides the day from the darkness. That's what Jesus do. Jesus is the light. And he'll be his no darkness. He told you that. He can be up at uh, 2 Samuel 23, verse 1. All of the stars are out during the daytime. The sun is just that one that outshine them all to the point where you don't even see them. The sun is that great light. That's the star that we're looking for. And he said, what time is it going to rise? In the morning. What you mean? It's the got to rule over the day. Verse 20, I mean, verse 1, go ahead. Now these be the last words of David. What did David say? David, the son of Jesse, said, what happened? The man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, yes. and the sweet psalmist of Israel, right. said, What did he say? The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. Ain't that how we get the Spirit? The Spirit of the Lord is spake by me, saying what? And his word was in my tongue. Yes. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. Yes. He that ruleth over men must be just. That's right. You got to be just. That's why I tell you he's coming with judgment in righteousness to judge the world. Go ahead. Ruling in the fear of God. Yes. And he shall be as the light of the morning. He going to be like what? As the light of the morning. What's that? When the sun rises. Exactly. That's that great star. He shall be like what? The light what? Of the morning. That's what time in the sun, that star was going to rise. Right? What verse is that? Middle of four. Go ahead. Even a morning without clouds. Right. As the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. That's right. So we said he's going to be like uh, he's going to be like the sun. You know, like the light in the morning when the sun rises. Right? And he's going to be righteous. He's going to judge the world in righteousness. Right, pick me up at Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi 4 and 1. The people had to look at him and, and, and dig these type of signs out because they didn't have a New Testament. We got a one up on them. We got both books. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Malachi 4 and 1 according to the scripture. For behold, Go ahead. the day coming what day? that shall burn as an oven, mm -hmm. and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. That's right. And the, the Lord going to torch this thing. He said the day is going to come, and it hadn't happened yet. Go ahead. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, yes. saith the Lord of hosts. Who said that? The Lord of hosts. That means it's going to happen. Go ahead and read. That it shall leave them neither root uh -huh. nor branch. Right, he's talking about the proud, the wicked, the hearty, the high-minded. You get torched. Go ahead and read. But unto you that fear my name, what happened? Shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Who's going to rise? The Son of Righteousness. What? Who is that? That's Jesus. He told you, tried to show you all the way in Genesis. He told you in Isaiah, this, this, I and the children that I have was for signs. He the sign that ruled over the day. The Son of Righteousness. Go ahead. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. All right, hold your place right here. We're going to see. We're going to come back. Pick me up in 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1. We're going back, right back to that Malachi. Let me read this. 2 Peter 1, verse 19. That Malachi, that's prophecy, right? The son of righteousness is going to rise. He's talking about the storm on the earth, but the ones that know him. He's going to rise with what healing in his wings. He don't want to hear this thing. Verse 19, go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Right, so you're going to believe the prophecy. Go ahead. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Like what? As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until a light that does what? Shineth in a dark place. Like what? Until the day dawn uh -huh. and the day star arise in your hearts. What day star? The sun rises. Let's Jesus. 
the day nine or the day star. Go ahead. Knowing this first, what? that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So it, that sign of righteousness it doesn't have a private interpretation. It ain't no private interpretation. You should know who that is. Peter was telling you to the day dawn or the day star arise in your heart. The number one star that's out in the day is the sun. Come on. Now right, go back to that Malachi and we'll finish that. Go ahead. Verse 3. Yes, sir. And ye shall tread down the wicked. See? For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. That's right. In the day that I shall do this. Yes. Saith the Lord of hosts. Who's saying this? The Lord of hosts. And he said, who's going to do it? He said, I. Let you know, that's me. Son of Christ. In the day that I shall do this. Look, no, go ahead. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. We will seal the, seal the law among my disciples. Remember ye the law of Moses. Same thing. Go ahead. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Yes. For all Israel. Uh huh. With the statutes and judgments. Go ahead. Behold. What happened? I will send you Elijah the prophet uh -huh. before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's right. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and I smite the earth with a curse. That's right. He don't do that. We're going to read that in one second, but we're going to. Put a stamp on this uh, son of righteousness right quick. Uh, pick me up in Revelation 22, verse 16. But Peter told he Peter called him the day star or the day dawn, right? That's what, that's what the Lord tell you at his home now. They had to know, they had to see a sign that he was here, that he was born. They came from a long, the wise men came from a long way. They gonna come on an empty journey? No, the Lord gave him a sign that he was born. What did he give him? The day star. The star that, that, that ruled over the moon. Pick me up at verse 16. Hearken to the scripture. I, Jesus, have Who? sent my angel. Who? Jesus. Okay. Have sent my angel. To do what? To testify unto you these things in so, the churches. So he, the, the churches of the Lord, you're gonna have knowledge. He said, because he sent his angel to testify to you these things in the church like what? I am the root and the offspring of David. So he sent his angel to testify to his churches who he is. He said, because I am the root and the offspring of David. And what else are you? And the bright and morning star. And they got that. Now you know who it is. Now you know what star they saw. That's the sign. He told you who he is at his own mouth. The day star. And he told you, and gave you a, a clue. He said, it's, it's coming out of the east. And we are on the sun rise in the east. He even called himself the son of righteousness. Let you know it's that same, it's that one and same star. He even told you it's for signs. Jesus, I am the light. Ain't no way you should be able to mix it up and get it wrong. That's what he tells you. And if you did, if you do, go back to that Malachi 4 and read verses 5 and 6 real quick. I'm going to give you another sign. But remember, the scripture, the, he coming in the volume of the book. The whole, if it ain't talking about Jesus, you tell me who it's talking about. Because the man I told us, the book is written about me. I'm the bright, the morning star. I'm the one to give light to the world. Ain't that an old song when they sing in Christmas time? Anyway, we ain't gonna bring up any kind of memories. <laughs> but, uh, there's some damnable memories, one. But, uh, pick them up at verse 5. Go ahead. Behold. Yes, sir. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So this is another thing he's gonna do before this man hit the scene. So once he hit the scene, there ain't going to be no way you will mix them up. He said, before they uh, drill for the day of the Lord, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet. Elijah already dead at this point. Come on. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Right, he gonna, so he's going to have a job. He's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. And vice versa. Go ahead. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's right. So all these things are going to take place before they break day. Go back into, uh, pick me up at Matthew 3.
Matthew 3, verse 3. So you see the wise men, they, they testify that they saw the star. Verse 3. Man, just go to the start of that verse 1. Go ahead. In those days he came John the Baptist. Who what? Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Right. What did he say? And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's right. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That's right. So he, that's, that's the one he's talking about. This is Elijah. This is Elijah he's talking about. John the Baptist. But we're going to keep going. Go ahead. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins. Mm -hmm. And his meat was locust and wild honey. Go ahead. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Right. He turned in the hearts of the children back to the Father and vice versa. Go ahead. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come yes. to his baptism, right. he said unto them, O generation of vipers, yes. who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So did John speak uh, comfortably to them, to the, to the Pharisees and Sadducees? No. He didn't say, O oh, you great Christians. Right? He didn't say that. He said generation of vipers. He called them by what they were doing. They were snakes in the ground. Go ahead. Or say, yes. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. But yet, still, he told them, you need to repent. Bring forth uh, fruits that's good for repentance. He's turning the hearts of the children back. He's making the way before the Lord hit the scene. Right? Go into uh, Matthew, the 17th chapter. Pick me up at uh, verse 9. Before Jesus hit the scene with his ministry, he said, a messenger got to come before him. Elijah the prophet got to do something. 17, Matthew 17, verse 9. Hard to the scripture. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, What? Tell the vision to no man right. until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. That's right. Go ahead. And his disciples asked him, saying, What they say? Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? That's right. It, even the scripture said that, right? Say so why they say But they want to know why. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, say? Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. So they really, they really looking for Elijah to come in the flesh. But Jesus told them, Elijah already done came. You didn't recognize it. And he's going to restore all things. Go ahead. But I say unto you. What you say? That Elias has come already. That's right. That's what Jesus said. Elias already done came. Go ahead. And they knew him not. They didn't know him. Go ahead. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Right. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And what happened? Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Oh, that's what that Elias is. It's John the Baptist, but he had to come first, preaching and making a way before the Lord hit the sun. Why? How do we know that? Because the prophets told us that. Right? Picking up at John the first chapter, verse 19, then we'll, we'll get be done with this. John 1 and 19. Because he was saying that they didn't know him. He done came out with they didn't, they didn't even know him. John 1, verse 19. Welcome to the scripture. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who, else, who art thou? That's right. They said, oh, that's John. Who are you? Go ahead. And he confessed and denied not, mm -hmm. but confessed, I am not the Christ. Right. He's always letting them know. I'm, no, I'm not him. I'm not the Christ. Go ahead. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? Uh -huh. And he said, I am not. What did he say? Art thou that, art thou that prophet? And he said, are you that prophet? You the one? Go ahead. And he answered, no. Go then ahead. said they unto him, who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? 
What sayest thou of thyself? So who you say you are? You got to tell them one of the sentence. Who are you? Go ahead. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He knew exactly who he was, didn't he? He said, I'm the one. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What I got to do? Go ahead. Make straight the way of the Lord. Yes. As said the prophet Isaiah. That's right. That's who I am. See, I got to make straight the way for the Lord. That's why he came baptized. Go ahead. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And they asked him. What they asked him. And said unto him. Yes. Why baptizest thou then? Right. If thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet. Say, well, so why are you baptizing then? If you ain't the Christ, go ahead. John answered them saying. What did he say? I baptize with water. Yes. But there standeth one among you whom you know not. He said, I'm, I'm baptizing you with water. But there's somebody standing among you you don't know. Go ahead. He it is. Yes. Who coming after me yes. is preferred before me. That's right. Who shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. All right, so he had to make that statement. He said, he it is, he preferred before me. And then, Lord, I tell you, on the root and the offspring of David, the root come first. The offspring come afterwards, right? He said, he it is who was preferred before me. He said, who, who shoes latch, I'm not even worthy to unloose. Go ahead. These things were done in Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. Go ahead. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him mm -hmm. and said, What did he say? Behold, the what? Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Isn't that what the angel told Mary that his job was going to be? To die for the sins of the people? He take away the sins of the world. He was before me. That's what Jesus said. I'm a blue man, the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. This is consistent. Go ahead. Verse 30. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. Why? For he was before me. That's right. He was before me. He said, But he coming after me. Meaning he's been here. The everlasting one. He just coming after me. Why? Because the scripture said I had to come first. You know, we can't break protocol. You got to follow the scripture. You got to line up. But this is how we know. Come on, finish that off. And I knew him not. Right. I didn't even know him. Even though they was cousins, he didn't know him. Go ahead. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water. Right. So that's why I'm baptizing with water, because he had to be made known unto Israel. That's why I'm baptizing. I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. They got to make way, the way straight for the Lord. He didn't know exactly who he was. They can't break the scriptures, remember. They can't be broken. All right, pick me up at, uh, let's go back now to Matthew. Or we we'll leave off verse 7. 2 and 7. Or did we read that? Hold on, let me see what I'll do it to. Let's read 7 through 11. Go ahead. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Right. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and mm -hmm. search diligently for the young child. Right. Because that's where he was born at Bethlehem. Right. He said, I want you to go and search diligently for the young child. Come on. And when ye have found him, mm -hmm. bring me word again. Right. That I may come and worship him also. Right. When they have heard the thing. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east. So what star did they see? Exactly. Go ahead and read. Went before them till they came and stood over where the young child was. Because it was a sign. Come on. When they saw the star, what they do? They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They hadn't even seen Jesus yet. They just saw the star. They knew it was him. That's why they enjoyed what they see the great joy. Go ahead. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down mm -hmm. and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Right. Go ahead. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Right. They knew Herod had ill intentions for the child. 
So God warned them also, don't go back to hell, Lord. So they went and they departed into their own country. Come on. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. All right, so the Lord is guiding this thing, right? He so said, you need to go into Egypt. You want your family with the young child? And I want you to stay there until I bring you word again, because Herod is looking to destroy the young child. Go ahead. 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Mm -hmm. It was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, Good. saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Okay, we gotta see if the, the prophet said that. But we verify that he is the Christ. Let's go to Hosea 11 and 1. I said, so the prophet got to say out of Egypt, have I called my son? Because you, you see, when you're dealing with the will of God, no man is going to stop it. Certain things have to transpire for it to take place, but it's going to take place. Just like when the Lord wanted to make uh, Saul the first king of Israel, he had to loose his, uh, his daddy's donkeys and let them go and, and wander off into uh, the wilderness or something. Just so that Samuel the prophet can anoint him as king. Otherwise, Saul wouldn't have had no reason to go meet up with Samuel. So certain things have to take place for the will of the Lord to, uh, to transpire. But no man is going to stop it. It's going to happen. Hosea 11. Read that one. He said, and because the Lord told him that, he said, all oh, this was done just so that the scriptures may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. He said, out of Egypt have I called my son. That's why I did all of that. Because it was written by the prophets. Come on, go ahead. When Israel was a child, what then I loved him. Is he not a child? We're dealing with the birth of Jesus, right? He's still a little, a little child. Go ahead. And called my son out of Egypt. Called your what? My son out of Egypt. Right. Bible told he's gonna be called the son of the highest, right? And he said he's called the son where at? Out of Egypt. So the Lord did all of that with Herod and everything just to bring forth, bring it to pass that which was spoken by the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. That's how he worked. So everything that is prophesied about the Lord to this point, we've been able to read it, right? Let's go back. We'll start at uh, the 16th verse. Matthew 2, verse 16. I mean, I know we read these scriptures millions of times, but not quite millions. Hundreds of times. But sometimes it's good to take a deeper look into them so you can get, you can understand why things happen. Verse 16, Matthew 2, verse 16, talking to the scripture. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath. Right, so now something else is going to take place for something else to come to pass. So now he's talking, yeah, now Herod saw he was mocked, he's angry like you wouldn't believe. Go ahead. And send forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. The man did this because he was mad. He was mad that they mocked him and they made fun of him. Right? Regarding the birth of Jesus. So what did he do? He sent forth and slew who? All the children of Bethlehem. That's right. Go ahead. And in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Right. So from that point to two years back, he he inquired of the wise men to go and bring word where the child was. And once he finally saw that he was mocked, it seemed like it took him almost two years. But anyway, once he finally saw he was mocked, he sent word out to slay all the children in Bethlehem from two years old and up. Why Bethlehem? Because that's where the prophets told him that uh, the child was going to be born, right? So he did that. What verse? 17. Go ahead. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet. So after he slew all of the, the, the children from two years and up, then 
it was fulfilled. That was spoken by Jer Jeremiah, that's Jeremiah the prophet, right? Jeremiah made it spoken, but somebody else wrote it down. No, Jeremiah, Jer Jeremiah did write it down. He spoke it and wrote it. So all of that happened just so it could come to pass the saying that was written by Jeremiah, which was what? In Ramah was there a voice heard, mm -hmm. lamentation and weeping, and great mourning. Right. Raquel weeping for her children, right. and would not be comforted because they are not. That's right. So that was prophesied. Jeremiah wrote it down. When did it come to pass? And here was the wall of children for two years and back. Let's look at it. So great mark was a great uh, morning. They heard an lamentation. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, verse 15. Jeremiah 31, verse 15. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. Mm -hmm. What kind of voice? Lamentation uh -huh. and bitter weeping. Right. Raquel, weeping for her children, right. refused to be comforted for her children right. because they were not. For thus said the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. We take it all the way to the end, but look, look, verse 15, this was prophesied years and years before Jesus hit the scene. It didn't come to pass until Herod slew all the children from two years and back. Once he saw that he was mocked at a wise man. So this gives us confirmation, right? That Jesus is who we, the Bible say he is. Because everything is happening according to as it is written, right, by the prophet. Back, back me up to Exodus 1. We're still going to deal with this, this slaughter. Exodus 1. We're picking up the verse eight. Exodus one. Exodus one. Verse eight. All the way to the spirit. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, mm -hmm. which knew not Joseph. That's right. This king didn't know Joseph. So go ahead. And he said unto his people, well, Behold. The people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Right, so he knew who his people were and he knew who the Israelites were. And he told his own people, the children of Israel, they more and mightier than we. Go ahead. Come on. Uh -huh. Let us deal wisely with them. For what reason? Lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they, that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. That's right. So we're going to be a wise with it just in case they increase and want to join our forces with our enemies and root us out. We're going to get wise with it. Pick me up at verse uh, 13. We're going to see what he did. Go ahead. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. That's right. So he started to deal with them, right? And the one thing he did, made them serve with rigor. Go ahead. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. And what else? In mortar. Yes. And in bread. And in what? And in all manner of service in the field. So everything they put their head, hand to, they was being grieved and oppressed by the Egyptians. Come on. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Right. That's the cruelty with force. All right, come on. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra. Shif right, so not so on top of that, you're making us, you know, you're oppressing us in every uh, way imaginable. But on top of that, you're going to speak to the Hebrew midwives. What you going to tell them? In the name of the other, Hua. Uh huh. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then he shall kill him. So this is how he called himself getting wise with Israel. Once you see 
the, if the Israelite women or the Hebrew women have and bring you forth a, a, a baby and it's a son, what I want you to do? Kill him. Kill him. And then what? That's on top of the hard bondage and the river. Go ahead. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Right. So why? What would be the point of that? Because a man carried the seed. Huh? Come on. 17. Yes. But the midwives feared God. So did they do it? And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them. And then what happened? But saved the men children alive. Yes. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, what? Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Why are you disobey? I told you to kill them. All right, and what they tell him? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, mm -hmm. Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, right. for they are lively and are delivered ear unto ear the midwives come in unto them. Uh -huh. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. That's right. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. That's right. The midwives feared God more than Pharaoh. That's why they didn't do it. And then what the Lord blessed them. And then what happened? And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. And it's just like what happened to Jesus. He killed all of the, the, the sons, but uh, every daughter he would let them live. Like they have been Moses day. Pick me up at Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. Talking to the spirit. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. of so, thy that's what uh, Moses is telling Israel. He says, the Lord is going to raise up a prophet from among you. Right, go ahead. Of thy brethren. Right, so he got to be of the brethren, one of the twelve tribes. Go ahead. Like unto me. He ain't going to be like me. Go ahead. Unto him ye shall hearken. You got to listen to this one. Go ahead. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, mm -hmm. neither let me see this great fire anymore. That's right, but God came down and talked with them himself, right? It was so overwhelming. It was like, no, Moses, you go up and talk to God lest we die. We don't want to talk to God no more. You go up and you intercede on our behalf. Whatever he say, we'll do it. So that's what he's running back down to him. And then what happened? That I die not. Yes. And the Lord said unto me. What did he say? They have well spoken that which they have spoken. So that, that, that's a good thing. You spoke well. So I'm going to give you something that you used to. I'm going to let a man declare it. Whatever he tell you, you got to listen to this guy. Though. Go ahead. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. But he ain't going to be just any old man. This, this guy, I'm going to raise him. He's going to be a prophet and he's going to come from the midst of, of Israel. Go ahead. Like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth. And then what? And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And this prophet is going to be just like Moses. And he's going to speak whatever that the Lord said. That's all he's going to speak. Keep me up at Acts 3. Let's see. So what things that happened to Moses, same, a lot of the same stuff going to happen to the same prophet. One of the things we saw in Moses' day, it was killing all of me. Me and child. Acts 3, verse 22. Acts 3, verse 22. Pick him up at 21. Go ahead. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Right. So he was talking about Jesus. He said he should have seen Jesus Christ. If his priest before he then he started telling whom the heaven must receive, he gotta go back. He said the time of restitution of all things. Go ahead. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The Lord done told you about this guy by all the holy prophets since the world began. Go ahead. 
For Moses truly said unto the fathers, What did Moses say? A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he, he shall say unto you. So this prophet, you got to hear this prophet. And he said, and Moses truly said, A prophet shall the Lord raise up from your brethren like unto me. This prophet, you got to hear whatever he say. He told you who he was in the 20th verse. Get that 20th verse. Go ahead. 28. Mm -hmm. 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. That's what he's talking about. That's what that prophet is. Jesus. You got a correlation. When Moses was born, Pharaoh killed all the men child. Moses was the only one left to declare his generation. When Jesus was born, he saw that he, uh, Herod saw that he was mocked. What did he do? Kill all the men child, two years old and back. Just prophet, just like Moses. That way, once it happened, we should be able to recognize. Oh, the scriptures already told us something like that happened. Even to the point he had the prophet uh, Jeremiah to write it. And you would bet you would know when it come to pass. He said, Rachel ain't gonna stop weeping for it. You're gonna hear the voice. But one week, it's going to be a voice of lamentation. That race is not going to stop weeping for a tear. Then he shows when it came to pass in the days of Jesus. When Herod killed, slayed all of them, men say, our child, children from two years old and died. That's how we believe in Jesus. According to the scripture. Whatever the scriptures say, you go with the scripture. The scriptures in Jesus is like looking into a mirror. That's what the testimony is doing. It's showing you the mirror of who he is. And whatever the prophet said about it. Because you saw that all the prophets spoke about him since the world began. Right? Pick me up at uh, Matthew. Let's finish this off right quick. Matthew 2 and 17. We only got a few more. But all we're doing is we. We know, we learn who he is. We learned that the book was speaking to him, but you, you're going to have people that tell you, uh, yeah, when Jesus came, he fulfilled everything. He fulfilled it all. It's over. Now, we'll let Jesus tell us what he was fulfilling. Matthew 2, verse 17. Go ahead. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, in Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Mm -hmm. Raquel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Right. She, how how mother going to be comforted when all her children get to be enslaved? She can't. There ain't, no, ain't no comfort in that. Go ahead. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise. And take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. Mm -hmm. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. That's right. See, you see what type of stuff have to come to pass for the scripture to be fulfilled? The man was going back into the land where he was. But he said, read that part again. Verse 22, go ahead. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, because he probably would have did the same thing in looking to slay Jesus. Go ahead. He was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Mm -hmm. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Right. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So all of that portion had to happen just so the scriptures can be fulfilled that said he shall be called a Nazarene. And he came into the city of Nazareth that it might be fulfilled that it was spoken by who the prophet, saying he shall be called Nazareth. 
Different things have to take place. But the script, that don't stop the scripture from men to see it. It's the truth. It has to be that way. That's uh pick me up at Luke 24. So we're gonna deal with that Nazarene part on next week. Luke 24. Because we're gonna have them. The 24. Verse 25. But first, hold this by Give me Matthew 5 and 17 before we get here. This sort of make a little bit more sense. Matthew 5, verse 17. This is Jesus' words. Matthew 5, verse 17. Hearken to the scripture. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Right. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And you're going to have the ones that are going to play on this fulfilled to the best they can. They're going to even use the uh, scenario, the glass has full, glass has empty. They're going to say, see, fulfilled meaning he completed it all. Right? If, you, if I fulfill something, I mean, I don't have to do it. No. I mean, it's going to be all kind of foolishness. And all you have to do is say, oh, yeah. Let's see what Jesus fulfilled. Then you go over and you take me to this Luke 24. Pick me up at Luke 24, verse 25. See, the Bible interprets itself. They can talk all they want. We're not in interested in their talk. We're interested in what the Bible says. Verse 25, hearken to the scripture. Then he said unto them, mm -hmm. O fools. So this is after he, he died and rose from the dead, right? And he's he talking to his apostles. And, he, and they was kind of down, they, you know, didn't really believe what he said, O fools. And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Right. So O fools and slow of heart, you need to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Go ahead. I'm not Christ to have suffered these things yeah. and to enter into his glory. Right. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he told them. Remember what he said in John? Everybody that's coming to the Lord has to be taught. This is what he did to his apostles. He said he started at Moses and went through all the prophets and he expounded unto them in all the scriptures. What? The things concerning himself. And people tell you now that the New Testament is, is fulfilled. It's no good. I mean the Old Testament. Jesus did it all. Go ahead. 28. And they drew nine to the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Now drop down to 44. Go ahead. And he said unto them, What? These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. What? That all things must be fulfilled. So he's, you know, because that's what they tell you not to fulfill. He did it all. He said, These are the words I spoke to you. You know, while which that all things must be fulfilled, like what? Which were written in the law of Moses uh -huh. and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Right. Concerning him. The Psalms, the prophets, and the law of Moses. All things had to be fulfilled. What? Concerning him. He fulfilled the part that's written of him. That's how we know he's the true Christ. All those things were written in the prophets and the Psalms. So that we'll know once he came on the scene, that's the one. That's the true Christ. But the scripture is already foretold of him. That's what he came to fulfill, not the law. He didn't come to fulfill the part that you have to do. He came to fulfill the part that's written about him. Go ahead. 45. Yes. Then opened he, he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. See, the people who, who tell you this, they don't want to go into the scriptures. He's talking about the scriptures as the Old Testament. They don't want to go into that Old Testament. They don't want to deal with that. He even had to open his apostles' understanding. That they might understand the scripture. Go ahead. And said unto them, What he say? Thus it is written. Uh -huh. And thus it behooves Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He said it's written. That's the key. He said it's written. It behooves Christ to suffer 
and to rise from the dead the third day. Go ahead, we're gonna finish this chapter. Go ahead. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. All these things the prophets foretold. This is what we was expounding unto them. Go ahead. And ye are witnesses of these things. Now, you, you witnesses. Who was witnesses? Israel. Where we learn that from? Isaiah, 40, 42nd chapter, 43rd chapter. Say, Israel, you are my witnesses. Come on. 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Right. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Mm -hmm. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, right. praising and blessing God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. One more place. Romans 10. So that's what he had to expound to them. Things in the scriptures concerning himself. Because you know people going to use statements like uh, when we're about to read and say, this is all you got to do. But you got to be taught with God. You got to be taught who he is. He even had to teach, if he taught his apostles and his disciples, how do you get a free pass to just believe and not know anything about it? You don't. You just didn't read the part when you said you got to believe on me according to the scripture. You read this, what we got to read, and this all, that's all you wanted to do. It don't work like that. All right? Pick me up at verse 9. Go ahead. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, huh? and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, that's all I want to believe. But then they go on and teach you that Jesus rose in the day and a half. I confess with my mouth, I'm good, I'm going to be saved. You're still a sinner. You're still a sinner. It's going to be ill for you at the end. So this is all they want to do, but the Lord gave us those scriptures to show you. Ain't no way out. Ain't no way around. This ain't no shortcut. You got to come in by the door. Just confessing with your mouth is not a murderer can do this and go out and kill as soon as he finished. So he gonna be saved? No. Not happy. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Yeah. Verse 10. Yes, sir. For with the heart, man believed unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's with the mind. Go ahead, man believed unto what? Righteousness. Yeah, they, they leave out the righteousness. Bro. They just call on the name of Jesus, they go back and they still water when they see him. But you gotta believe unto righteousness. Go ahead. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. What said that? The scripture. The scripture. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. The scripture is being fulfilled. You gotta get believe on Jesus according to the scripture. That's it. Go ahead. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Mm -hmm. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That's right, he is. Ain't no difference. And whoever doing the will of God, you can have salvation. No matter if you Jew, Gentile, Hamite, and all the rest of them. But keep rolling. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's all they want to do. It ain't that literal. Go ahead. Well, the Lord wants to explain it. Come on. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Well, how are you going to call on somebody you ain't never believed in? Because you call on him, you'll be saved. But you ain't never believed in him. How are you going to call on him? You can't. Go ahead. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How are you going to believe if you ain't never heard about him? Why haven't you heard about him? Because you don't read the scriptures. And the scriptures is where you go to learn about God. The scriptures is, is who, how you know who he is, who he say he is. So you believe in somebody you don't even know. How is that? It's not going to happen. Go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how are you going to hear without a preacher? Remember, that's why we read that Corinthians. So they got ministers too. And they're going to come to you bringing you what? Another Jesus. And Paul said, the one we ain't preach. He said, don't don't believe you say you got to deal with it. Because they bring you another spirit and tell another gospel. 
we get our gospel from the scripture. So we say, how are you going to believe in somebody you never heard of? Go ahead. 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? So the Lord got away. This thing is like a domino effect. It's, it's locked, airtight. One thing leads to another. He said, how are you going to believe in somebody you never heard about? How are you going to hear without a preacher? He said, and how the preacher going to preach unless I send them? And God ain't sending nobody that he ain't teaching. That's why I said, everybody who come to me has to be taught of God. You ain't getting by. Ain't no way out. So he said, how shall he preach unless he sing? Come on. As it is written. As it is written. There we go again. As it is written. That's the title of the lesson. As it is written what? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's, that's even written. You know, we, we'll get to that whenever we get to it. And he said, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings. That's good news. And he said, the gospel of peace. All right? That's why one of his names is Prince of Peace. Go ahead. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. That's the problem. And now they have not all obeyed the gospel. Finish that and we done. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? See, you didn't even know Isaiah said that. You don't read Isaiah. You don't read the scriptures. That's where you get your foundation. That's how you're going to learn about God. Last one, he's going to tell you. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You're, going to, you're trying to have faith in Jesus, but you got to do it according to the word of God. That's how your faith is going to come. You can get faith. Faith in Jesus is going to come only by what? Hearing the word of God. That's it. So the, the Old Testament is where you get the foundation. The New Testament is testifying and bringing forth his life in the flesh. If you can see it, you can verify it, you can prove it. But that, that Old Testament, you can't do nothing without that Old Testament. You got to have it. You got to have it. Matter of fact, you got to have both books, like we said, the law and the testimony. As it is written. Hope somebody got some understanding on it. As it is written, the scripture can't be broken in Jesus' name. I thank you for your time. Amen. Good Lord. Good time. So next week we'll continue. We're we'll gonna pick up right where we left off. And we'll keep rolling until we get to the uh, the resurrection and him ascending back to heaven and you know until we get to the end of it. We need to think of a club name and call this series. I think it's on.